Welcome to another Focus Learning interview. We have for this interview Snetjana Baklia Knoch. Don't pronounce it very well, but I tried anyway. Uh, and she's from Novi Sad, from Serbia, and is an international trainer and facilitator for young people and youth workers. The main reason that we invited Satsana for an interview is that she in, is involved in the education training of youth workers. And in this interview, we want to focus a bit on one specific training course, the Yoko Mo training course, a training course in the framework of the Erasmus Plus Youth Program. Uh, Yoko Mo, which sounds, I realize now, very uh, Japanese. It's not Japanese. Uh, it, it stands for uh, Youth Workers Competence Model. Um, Welcome, Tatiana. Um, Thank you. Maybe, can you give a little bit an introduction to, to where this Yokomo training course comes from? All right, Yokomo, no, it's not Japanese and neither it's uh, Australian yogurt, which is a brand uh, there. Uh, so it comes from, uh, from a need to, in a way, operationalize, I always struggle with this word, the ETS competence model for youth workers working internationally. Yeah, so it was basically developed uh, to offer opportunities for youth workers to benefit from the model, to use it for their practice, to use it for their competence development, to understand how it can also be applied on their local and national level, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it was basically more than a learning program, which is in the end how it started calling it because it felt a little bit more complex than the training. Although training is a complex thing in its own, uh, it's became a series of offers. Yeah, so it had uh, blended trainings even before it was cool. Uh, so it was a bit of online parts and residential. It also offered several MOOCs, so massive open online courses and a self-assessment tool Yeah, based on the competence model. So that's very in short where Yokomo was. Oh, maybe, wait, another thing, uh, what it became. So that was the intention originally. It was uh, somehow a playground for people to explore the model and to explore how they stand in relation to it in terms of their competences, in terms of specifically their attitudes and behaviors, which was another focus, and also in terms of their systemic role and the systems around them when it comes to youth work. Yeah, so this yeah. is how it evolved in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, in this project focus, focus learning, the, the focus, like the word says, is on learning. Um, so how do you cover the, the topic of learning in, in, in Yokomo? But because in a way, there are two, two entries to that. Um, youth workers being learners in, in that project. And then, of course, them as uh, uh, facilitators of learning processes of young people. How, how do you get into that? Mm -hmm. Well, like focus is on focus here, we call it Yokoma Learning Program. So I hope that that also helps uh, a little bit. So the way that the, the, it was designed, it was really to support the learning journey of youth workers. So I first talk about your first trend, yeah? Uh, exploration in a way. So it wasn't designed to give answers, let's say, uh, but in a way to propose questions, to propose the safety net, uh, to propose a learning environment where people can explore it uh, themselves, yeah? Uh, and it was competence-based and competence-based is related to learning uh, as such, yeah? So it provided different opportunities for people uh, to learn, as I said, in mostly residential, let's say, although it was blended. It also created spaces for people to learn in a MOOC, which is quite self-directed, if you would like, yeah? So mm -hmm. I don't think that was our main objective there, but it was there anyway, yeah? So if you have the MOOC, then it's really a lot about empowering the learners through the activities, through the through the framework, through the uh, environment to really pick and, not pick and, not pick and choose, but to really to follow the pathway that enables them to grow in a way, yeah? Because the whole idea of Yokomo was that they look at their competences, but also if not develop them further, especially because we had the focus on behaviors and attitudes, which are not so instant, and it doesn't happen in a course, mm -hmm. even of a learning program, but at least to start this process in them. And as we might know, the people who are involved in learning, learning is an endless process. And it's important to set the milestones, to 
plan the further development, to think about how to go about it. Maybe what is interesting to say that in the when we had a systemic approach, which was one of the aspects of Yokomo, we also looked at, uh, in a way, who owns the competence development, and or you can say, who owns the learning. So is it me as a youth worker that come to Yokomo? Uh, or is it my wider youth work system that I interact mm -hmm. with? And this is how I develop uh, further in a way. Yeah? So the learning was very much present when it comes to youth workers themselves. You, you, you said, you, you said uh, and, and we, we focused especially on behavior and attitudes. Yes. Meaning, um, well, if you look at competences, there's also knowledge and, and skills. That, that was less in the picture? So in a way we had, I'm trying now to give you a, a, let's say a holistic picture, which is not always so easy because we had different uh, elements there. Um, the very first thing, the pilot of the pilot focused on the competence-based approach. Basta, that's, I mean, not that's it, but in a way, and knowledge and skills and attitudes and behaviors. But we somehow always knew and the model itself, um, it, it's not that it puts more importance to attitudes and behaviors, but it's that it says, okay, these are not so easy to acquire uh -huh. these are not so easy to understand these are not so easy to reflect on so we might need to put a little bit of more attention yeah and it was known from the very beginning that one of the courses also residential and the MOOC will be dedicated particularly to attitudes and behavior behaviors precisely because of this yeah not saying that knowledge is easier yeah? otherwise we will all be geniuses i would think or skills we will all be able to do things but it's somehow it's almost like a more common sense for people to figure out you know how to get the knowledge or how to practice the skills but when it comes to attitudes and behaviors our feeling was also that youth workers and we ourselves are not necessarily always in touch with it and not always able to understand also how our attitudes impact the behavior yeah? Yeah. And if we want a true change, let's say, and true learning, true learning, whatever that might mean, then we also need to kind of put a special focus uh, yeah. on the yeah. attitudes and behaviors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's well, and, and, and probably it's, I would say, it's also more complex. Now, if if you if you lack knowledge, you can go for that knowledge, or if you lack skills, you can well to say it, you can go arguably, yeah, yeah, you practice, uh, but but. but Attitudes, behavior is, is much more complex also to get into, to understand and to and to change also, I guess, no, it's, it's uh, yeah. Uh, Baba, I was interrupting you. Um, um, That's fine. Um, but, but, but because then the other angle of learning and, and use work is of course the facilitation of learning. Do, do you have the idea, not to generalize, but that use workers, if you look to the participants of those courses, um, was that already in their mindset that they are facilitators of learning? Well, given uh, that if you ask me to identify our participants, whether they are youth workers or trainers, let's say, I would struggle often to do this distinction. I think that's very much on the agenda of most of the people that I had. I think that's also quite determined by the fact that we are working in Yokomo with youth workers active internationally. And somehow, if you're active internationally, what are your options? Youth exchanges, uh, European Solidarity Corps, some kind of volunteering, or even with young people in other mobilities and, and so on and so forth. So somehow, they are all designers learning processes also impacted by the, the programs, Erasmus Plus and European Solidarity Corps. So my feeling is that that's very much high on their agenda. It's actually other things that maybe we struggled more to when it comes to their identity. Yeah, Because as you know, the competence model has all these kind of uh, other competence areas. And some come, I think, more naturally to the youth workers, such as facilitating the facilitation of uh, individual and group processes. And some maybe as as networking or advocating or or even some uh, types of uh, evaluation and so on, maybe are not so so much yeah. So I would definitely say that when people think about the competences that they would like to develop and they need to work with young people, a facilitation of learning is 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 very high on the agenda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you were saying uh, it's higher on the agenda also because of of the kind of activities which are in European youth workers. Would you say it? It it it, it it's well, maybe it's not the, the right word to use. That it's easier or more more obvious to work on learning in in international project than it is in local use work. Yes, I couldn't, or, or rather, how how could I say? I think it very much depends on the national context as well. If I take Serbia 
uh, I think learning is also uh, very high on the agenda is simply because our youth work was shaped also by the programs mm -hmm. and was shaped by project-based youth work, let's say. Yeah, so somehow different activities like workshops or different programs or, or you know, exchanges, even regional and so on, it's, it's also there. So I think it depends on the context, the tradition of youth work and, and so on. Um, but I would say indeed that somehow those people who work internationally, it's, yeah, it's instant. Yeah, it's there. And this is what we, this is what we do. This is what we deal with. I think it's no second guessing there, uh, let's say. Yeah, it's the role that we take in a way. Yeah, yeah, but, but yeah, probably also but. because no, 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 <laughs> because I can see that it, it uh, there, there was a lot of attention in the last well since Use Pass was introduced in in, in in the European program, there was a lot lot of attention for um, uh, for learning in in, in 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 international in European use work, but I'm I'm wondering now listening to you, is it? Is it also like that that those kind of activities as such give well because it, they are more planned maybe they are more uh, um, if somebody goes on, on a volunteering for six months or nine months then there is a process and there is a mentor or a support person so it, it maybe it's also yeah more obvious or more easier to, to to talk about learning because it, it, it's shorter process than maybe local use workers, local use work where there is different kind, well, where, where there are more shorter activities or, or I don't know, but, but, but <laughs> just thinking. I think it's possible. I think as you said, youth must play the role or in general kind of the recognition competences uh, and so on. I think it's also, I think it's a combination of short and long because I think in let's say local youth work and now we are stereoty stereotyping I think both of us are, uh, about international and local yeah. but we need to in order to give some kind of answer. Huh? Yeah. I think just in local you have a chance just to play football no exactly. or with the kids or or do the how do you call the matarquillos they say in Portuguese the the, the table uh, football, table football and so on yeah. and sometimes and it's a part, of course, of the grander plan or the greater plan of the development of young people and support. But sometimes it's just that, I think. And then maybe also, even with the volunteering and so on, in the international things, it's also that it's precious. So we need to use, as, as you know, this time very wisely. And we need to make sure that our young people, you know, get out of it as, again, with, with some sort of development, something in their hands to take further, I think. So maybe that's uh, as well. I think it's a combination of things, really. Uh. Yeah, 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 and and then when 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 turning back to um, to your command, when it's about uh, the 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 well, because it, that competence facilitation of, of of learning on individual and group processes, I think is the official uh, um, what are topics coming up then? What what are the important? What are the challenges for for youth workers they have to work with? Is it is it about methods? Is it about the process? What 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 do they see as challenging there? I think it's very interesting that uh, and it, this is Yokomo, but also other things that we were involved in. Somehow methods are super important. Yeah, it comes like, but how do we do this? Yes, and how do we do this practically? And how do we put this in place? So methods are definitely there. Unfortunately or fortunately, Yokomo is designed in a way that it doesn't provide the methods. It can provide the space uh, for mm. people to discover, but it's more to question the foundations of how the processes should be set up and should be run in a way. And then basically, uh, potentially, uh, one of the other things um, that is uh, quite a lot there is um, that people are really. Because when they, maybe they find it out before or they discovered it with Yokova, this competence-based approach. And then many yeah. people say, okay, and then how do we use this model with our young people? And then we exactly. say, well, this model is not for actually, and then of course you can identify some, let's say with intercultural learning. Okay, that, that's applicable, mm -hmm. transferable, yeah. right? But some others, maybe not so much. And I think it's also craving for understanding, okay, but how do we then do this competence-based approach with our young people? Yeah, but then yeah. also saying that, it's a bit difficult. Of course, there are competence-based approaches in also it should be in primary school, high school, university, and so on and so forth. But young people are also much wider audience, yeah, to have a set framework that says, well, this is it in a way. Yeah. So I think I think what youth workers somehow struggled with in a way, struggle with, 
when it uh, when it comes to working with young people is to have frameworks to have nets to to hold on to yeah? whether the methods or the competence frameworks or something that makes this journey a little bit easier yeah in a way. yeah yeah and i'm thinking back now what we said before about uh, the, about the importance of of of, um, of attitudes and behavior um I'm wondering what, what, what is if, if you look to attitude behavior, what 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 are then important attitudes for a use worker when it comes to facilitating learning? No, but, but, but you can have loads of methods and and and, but what what are then the important attitudes? Um, I can tell you one thing, and then we can uh, we can also speculate as well. I don't know, and maybe that's not relevant, but somehow that's what it came into my mind. So I, I decided to follow it. One call that was very strong in in especially in the first group that we work with, but also later on, was to look at this political competence or being civically engaged or activating young people. Yeah. So yes, you set up a learning process. Let's say you do it, but how do you? And I think it's also then how do you work? I think for me, part of the civic engagement is how you work on other people's attitudes, let's say, work uh -huh. or open the space. Yeah. And that's what our, our participants were really calling, uh, calling strongly for. Now it's in the making, it will be part of the competence framework, so great. But it's still, I think, is how to go about it and how to really, I think, uh, work with young people on that. Uh, to There is a learning, but then also how to integrate it in their behaviors, how to support them in becoming more active, more engaged, and, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So that's one. When it comes to attitude, uh, what maybe that could be developed to be the facilitators of learning in the uh, environments, but there is no competence frameworks, when there is no concrete methods, uh -huh. I think we, in, I think, in, uh, you know, uh, definitely need to come back to ambiguity. We definitely need to come back to, you know, dealing with the unknown in a way, you know, adjusting, adapting, being agile, you know, being flexible, and really together with the young people, finding the way how to, to move forward. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, th th one of the things we, which came back in, 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 in other talks we had around this project was the, uh, I think it's also a little bit, 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 bit connected to, to this whole thing with ambiguity and with change is, is, um, that in a way also the situation for for youth workers is quite ambiguous because um well it, it's a lot about reacting on what is happening and to see if there are what are learning opportunities and, and young people following their own path and um I remember an interview I did with the youth worker who said then at a certain moment well maybe the most important thing in in use work is to, but also the most difficult thing in use work is to ask proper good questions. How, how, um, how well, to to make young people also to express um, to express their needs, their 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 their, their wishes, their their, their 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 questions, their being insecure and. Uh, I think often that, that that's a very important part of being a use worker. I agree. And that was, uh, I think I said it a little bit at the beginning, that was one of the main things uh, in Yokomo, in a way, to set the process around, A, the questions that we brought as teams, let's say, mm -hmm. or, the, or the projects, but also to invite people to think of their own questions. What do you want to explore? What are you here for? And I think it's easier for some than the others, let's say. Yeah. yeah. I think it's it's a little bit of also, I think it's being able to ask questions. Uh, so to take this ownership in a way. And I would say, I mean, the, the, the youth worker that you said you interviewed said it's important to ask the right questions, but also to stimulate then, if we go the trickle down effect, young people to ask themselves questions. Yeah. Yeah, so if we're yeah. to, to try to find this path together, we need to be able all to raise questions and to understand what on earth is going on in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because also use workers need to be able to deal with all this ambiguity around them and have their questions and also to accept that they have all these questions and that there are maybe no answers for that. Um, okay. Um, thank you uh, for, for, for having these um, conversations on, 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 on use workers and learning and, and, and use workers facilitating uh, Thank you very much. Thank uh, you for having uh, me. And uh, um, 
well, uh, thank the, everybody for watching this. <laughs> exactly. Thank Ciao. you for watching. Thank Ciao. you. Thank you.